Hey guys, Fork with Geek back with another video and this time I'm going to be showing you how to use the um, impulse sensor, the pressure impulse sensor. Um, I'm going to be using a Pico and this is actually a homemade impulse sensor. Uh, you might know this by the name of first look sensor. So I actually um, built one a couple months back and I'm going to try it out and see how it's going to work out. So setup is this, my uh, homemade pulse sensor is going to be hooked up to my channel 1 and then I have on channel 2, I have my ignition probe hooked up to uh, spark plug number 1. So setup on the scope is going to be channel A, which my, is my uh, ignition probe, is going to be at 10 kV DC and for the uh, impulse sensor on channel B, 500 millivolts to start with, and it's going to be an AC. Okay, so the impulse sensor is going to be connected to my exhaust pipe. So what we're hoping to see on this is the impulse, the impulses from each cylinder as they go on its uh, exhaust stroke. So once it's running you want to see all the impulses coming from the tailpipe to be even. Just like when they used to do it in the old time ways that they would put a dollar bill on the tailpipe to, to diagnose or to find out there was a misfire going on. Basically it's the same idea. It's just electronic. So inside this is just a uh, piezo resistive sensor that reacts to pressure impulses or impact. It doesn't need a battery because it creates its own voltage. So, but the downside is you would not be able to relate the voltage reading on this to actual pressure readings because like I said, it would only react to impact or impulse pulses but it would not give you the exact pressure that the tailpipe or each cylinder was producing. Okay, so you've seen the setup. So I'm just going to focus you on the screen right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank the engine, make it start, and have you look at the waveforms as it runs. Okay, start it. Cranking. So it is now running, we're at the idle. What I try to do is put my trigger on so it will be more stable. My trigger up to here. There you go. So it seems to be frozen on the screen, so much better, much stable now. So as you can see right now, it's fairly okay, fairly even across the board as far as the exhaust pulses go. So I'm just going to kill the engine and focus you on the screen some more and let's talk about what we're seeing here. Okay, so right now I stopped recording the waveform. Oh, too much. Focus you here. So my ignition right here is, this is my ignition hooked up to number one. And from here to here is 720 degrees. So from this point to this point, I have one, two, three, four exhaust pulses, which would coincide with the, um, each cylinder. So what I'm going to do right now is go out here and put an overlay. This is ETO, Event Timing Overlays. What I'm going to do with this is choose my firing order for this particular engine. It's going to be 1342. I'm going to be synced. Let's put you closer. Sync on number one. Pistons on. There you go. Okay. So that's going to be my overlay. Let's bring up the uh, waveform again. Okay. So 
here we go start from here to this point here that is my 720 degrees so I'm going to focus you more on here there you go so my cylinders is one three four two starting off with the power stroke because we are referencing it on the ignition so right here from the point of the ignition cylinder number one is going to be on the power stroke so if that's on the power stroke number two is going to be on my on this exhaust stroke so this would be number two one four and then three and then back to two again so one four three and then two on this one so what I'm gonna do right now for us to check that I I'm doing this right that this is actually my number two and this is my number four and this number one and number three is I'm gonna simulate a misfire what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus you again on the screen while I run it and then I'm gonna pull the spark plug cable up to number four and see how it would react so again I have you focus on the screen what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the engine again and this time I'm gonna pull a spark uh, a plug out from number four while I focus you on the screen and so you're gonna see what's gonna happen when we simulate a misfire on number four Okay, starting. Okay, so now we're back at idle. I'm gonna try to pull, I'm gonna pull the uh, plug on number four and see how it reacts. See where we left off. Okay, rewind this back a bit. Okay, push the stop. Stop the recording. Twenty-five. That's an idle. Twenty-three. Okay, this is going to be where the miswire was simulated. So again, seven hundred twenty degrees. Put that overlay on it. Okay, I'm gonna zoom you in a bit. Okay, I think that's good, good enough. Okay, so I pulled the uh, plug out of the number four, and as you can see, right here is where it went into a deeper vacuum, if you could call that. So it don't, this is where the anomaly is and you can see that it was lined up exactly at where number, okay, number four is right here and when it went up on the exhaust stroke, you can see that it dipped right down. So whenever you're using an impulse sensor, the misfire would be a um, drastic drop going down or going into vacuum. So this one works. Mind you, I never had a chance to use the uh, original first look sensor and this was the um, first time that I was able to uh, test this homemade sensor but it seems to be working pretty fine. So number four exhaust misfire. Oops, sorry. Out of focus there. It's kind of hard when you're doing this alone. There you go. So, what 
possible use would you have for this? Well, if you're working on a four-cylinder and has a dead miss, this is probably not the easiest way to go because there are easiest, easier ways to determine which cylinder is misfiring. One would be, the best would be like a cylinder balance test where you just pull the plugs one by one and see which one is contributing the least. But that's for a dead miss, a constant miss. Well, this would actually be more effective if you have an intermittent miss where you could not pinpoint it and doing a power balance test would not be uh, the best test to use because it's an intermittent and you don't know which one if you pull it for sure it's going to be a constant miss but by using an impulse sensor along with an ignition probe you can actually watch this live and see and play back if you're using a Pico which has a recording feature you could actually play it back and use an overlay and pinpoint which cylinder it is that is misfiring intermittently and focus uh, and focus your time on that cylinder alone okay and that's it for now thanks for watching